Hey guys, Gavin here, and people have been asking me, hey, Gavin, can you do another grading showcase, another grading master class, if you want to call it that way, and uh, people have seen uh, my recent projects on Instagram, I'm not posting that much, but people have seen this one and asked, how did you do it, can you uh, get into the details, what you did there, and uh, that's what we're doing today, this was shot by a good friend. A director friend from Berlin and a DUP that I got to know this year, a very nice one. And um, we did this together. It was a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun and a lot of shots. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I'm very proud of it. And uh, yeah, I want to show you how I, how I did it. So let's get into DaVinci Resolve. Here we are. Um, I cleaned up the note tree a bit for you guys so it's all a bit prepared so we can get through this a bit quicker um, um so as you can see the shot came like this it was shot on anamorphic lenses it was shot on sony venice and uh, i only have uh, apple ProRes 444 here i don't have the raw file here at the moment but that doesn't matter um, so you want to de-squeeze it you go into Right click on the shot, clip attribute, so it's in a square aspect ratio now, pixel aspect ratio at least. And uh, in this case, it's 2.0, so now it's correct, okay? So you see this car racing through the forest, one of my favorite shots because of the lighting conditions and yeah, it just looks awesome. Um, so file, um, project settings so in terms of color management um we're working in davinci yrgb here uh, i work with cst's in this case and it's also my preferred way to do color management to be exact and because i just have a bit more control i have to say it's just the way i do it uh timeline color space we have davinci white gamut intermediate so a nice big color space to work in and as a output color space we have rec 709 gamma 2.4 because my reference monitor here is calibrated for that okay so that's already set up so we have our first node here which is a cst and it's going from sony s gamut 3 and sony s log 2 it goes into DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. So everything between this note here and this note here. So everything between here is in DaVinci White Gamut. Okay, so we're working in a nice big color space. And everything after that is on Rec 709. Okay. So, um, so we went from, so we're going in DaVinci White Gamut here, and we're going in from White Gamut to Rec 709 in this one. So it's like a like a small package here, okay? So another CST, CST, CST. And that's how it looks then, okay? So it's a bit dark, but it looks correct. Colors look correct. We're taking a look at the shot right now can already see this red here okay so that's what that was something that the client wanted it, it it has to be a bit more orange for example so we see already that uh, you know the green the green tones are a bit you know it's not not really my taste a bit too warm maybe or at least i remember us saying that <laughs> and uh I also talked to the to the two fellas that I mentioned to the director and the DP and they wanted to use you know because lots of people do it and it looks nice can have good results they wanted to uh, use a film emulation on top okay so we're going on our display in our display color space here so this is Rec 709 and after that you know we have this little film compound node here so we're going in here and this LUT here, which we wanted to use, which is included into DaVinci Resolve, um, is, uh, please don't do it, DaVinci Resolve, Direct 709 codec 2383D65, that's what we used, okay? And this LUT expects a different color space. It's not working with Rec 709 typically. So when I deactivate this here, 
What is it doing? What is it doing? Why is it not reacting? Exit compound note. Oh yeah, so now you see it. <laughs> so the compound note itself was deactivated. Um, it's it's too dark, okay? So this LUT, you go in there again, show compound note, it expects another CST. So we go from Rec 709 into Sinian film lock, okay? Rec 709, Sinian film lock. So that's what this LUT here, this Kodak LUT expects. So as you can see, in my opinion, at least, the shot looks a lot more filmic right now, okay? So the greens are a bit, you know, they're a bit set desaturated. It's not as warm. It's more a bit of a cooler look. The contrasts curve is a different one. It just looks, I don't know, I don't know. It looks better on the eyes, okay? So that that's what we started with. But before I forget it, I also added this shot here to a to a group so i can have a pre-note so i put here in the studio version you have here you have the motion effects and i put a little noise reduction here you can do it in davinci resolve with the studio version or you do it with um i also use uh, neat video which you have to pay for i mean you have to pay for the studio version too but you might as well get just the studio version and use that for now because it's a good it's a good tool in davinci itself okay so that's we have on the, that's what we have on the pre note because we want to grade on a cleaned up image as you can see here. What difference it makes? See, there's a lot of chroma noise still going on, but it cleaned it up a fair bit. Okay. All right then. So after that, so in Da Vinci White Gamut, first of all, I did some balancing. Okay, so I was a bit too dark for my taste so i went in here just turned up turned up the the blacks a bit and the highlights a bit higher no did i really do that i think it was just the blacks so i just lifted the blacks a bit here okay can also go and ba -ba -ba. Yeah, so it's just the blacks and I did a small curve. So that's one of my main note trees that I do. And this here, those those can be <laughs> many more notes in here. I'll, I'll show you in a second. So I just went around and played with the with the curve a bit. You know? Here, blacks a bit more down if I want to activate the note first. So I wanted a bit more crunch in here again, so a bit more contrast, but I wanted to keep the, the highlights low, so that's why I turned them down here a bit, okay? So you have to go and just make a few points here and you just play around and you will see when something goes wrong, okay? Then, then I went and just took the color warper, okay? And I made, the, the greens more green so we wanted this really green look okay i think they're a bit too saturated still i need to adjust that so just color warper you go into the picture you pick and then it changes you know this formation here it's a nice way to quickly do some adjustments okay then we have the orange of the car because the client the client wanted to have this much orange much much orange <laughs> much more orange okay so i picked this here just highlight it you can do it on the panel or you just click here so you see what it's picking and i made this orange okay and then we have the car also highlight it again i tried to to get just you know this how's it called carrossery carrossery <laughs> no just the outer shell of the car you know what i mean and so i wouldn't pick anything else on the outside i just put this little circle on here and i let it track with the tracker just put here so it tracks the whole shot through okay and uh, they wanted to have the car pop a bit more and then 
I went and put this glow effect here. So you have to play with the shine threshold. Okay. You can see here now there comes this nice, nice glow through the through the trees here. So it looks, you know, a bit more cinematic. But I did this mask so I wouldn't touch the car. I don't wanna I don't want the car to glow or anything. Yeah. So that's what I did here. Didn't have to track anything because you know it's the shot seems the car isn't driving through here, so I don't have to worry about that. Then I went and what did I did here? What did I what did I did here? What did I do here? Um, oh yeah, um, I I did some light rays here. Okay, so. I tend to go and I, I knew that the light was coming, you know, from up here somewhere. So I just went and um, did position at an angle. So I could just adjust it from here. Yeah. And uh, then I just went and I think I can do a bit longer too. Let me show you the, let me show you that. Uh, Zoom a bit longer here so it comes down here and nice and soft okay all right so the rays come through the through the sky there which looks very nice see before after then then i went and picked the Headlights. See there. Softened it. Softened it. Oh, I cannot talk. It's insane. And uh, yeah, I, I. It's not that clean. Clean of a pick because it spills in here. But it's not that bad. You know, it's still. It's not burning or anything. Do you want it, uh, the headlights to pop? So that's what we did with this one. And then this was something I tend to do with shots like these. I just like to get a bit more focus on the on the on the subject here. And uh, I want this car to, you know, it's like like it's um, coming from from a tunnel or something as the focus has to be on the product. And that's why I did this little vignette here. It's not tracked yet. So I did this from the ground up. Um, so you can see it here. You can still track it, but it doesn't even make makes that much of sense. So just just soft soft minute and should be fine. And so those were the grading adjustments. That's actually it. So this this shot was, you know, it was beautiful from the start and with all this, we're going into Rec. 709, into our display color space. And we have this film emulation after. And I went and, you know, when I'm done with all of this, I sometimes go and just do an after note. You can also put it in here. Yeah. But I tend to do it in here in my, in my regular note tree. And then I just uh, pull down the blacks a bit and the highlights to, you know, to make it a bit more filmic again. And something I like to do, um, I've been using Behancer for the last few months um, because they were kind enough to send me a license and uh, I actually wanted to get one. And uh, I, as we have a film emulation on here, okay, we don't, of course, I, I didn't enable this one here. So the film emulation. And I just went and put some, some grain on there. So we have this nice small grain. Now it's a bit too, it's a bit too much for my taste. So you can, it's very nice, nicely adjustable in the answer. And I also put some halation on the headlights. See, so it gets this nice, a bit warmer, Halation tone, and that's actually everything I did here. So, so those, those were the adjustments on the shot. Um, if you have any questions, then feel free to ask them, and maybe uh, maybe it makes sense to 
do another one of those with one of the drone shots because they were doing this with uh, DJI Inspire 2, twos, I think. And uh, maybe that's, that, that would be a cool video to compare those and to uh, adjust those to each other. But that's the look I used. So that's also a nice blueprint for anything you do in DaVinci Resolve. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this and leave your comments, leave your feedback. If you didn't like it, leave a dislike. Of course, leave, if you liked it, then I would be happy to get a like from you. And I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers and bye-bye.